nice to nice to see you all. Thank you for joining today. Um, as Han was saying, my name is Irving Huerta. I am the convener of the data schools. And um, well, I'm just going to go through kind of an overview of the data schools, but the social data school in particular. Uh, we're going to talk about um, uh, a, a few modules as well. We're going to talk about the perfect application and hopefully later we're going to talk about the Q&A. So if you allow me, I'm just going to share my screen. So I think there are some uh, information over there, some information over there that you, you might find useful. So well, talk about the social data school that is taking place between the 9th and the 13th of January next year. It's going to be online, right? And as I was saying, this is what we're going to do today for this Q&A. We had the introduction. I'm going to give an overview of uh, the data schools, description of modules. Um, then we talk about the perfect application, uh, what we think might make a good application. And then the Q and A for twenty minutes. We can we can stay a bit longer if you if you want as well. And we just wrap up before three thirty p.m. Uh, UK time. So a bit of background about the data schools, um, about the Cambridge data schools. We have some objectives, and these are that we would like to put research methods in the hands of uh, people. Uh, sorry, it says data collections, but this is the social data school. So we would like to have. We like to hand over um, research methods in the hand uh, or hand them over to people working in civil society, uh, journalism, and uh, um, civil society in general. We would like to um, also, also foster development of ethical practices in digital research in general. Uh, we would like to encourage a uh, dialogue between academia, civil society, as I said, public sector, and industry about the social, ethical, and policy implications of digital research. Uh, we will also like to provide practical instruction and knowledge uh, exchange across sectors, professions, and disciplines. So it's, it's very practical, but at the same time, we also would like to, to give some uh, theoretical uh, foundations for uh, data practice. And uh, sorry there that it says uh, data collection um, um, for collections. No, it was it was all right. So I'm so sorry. Data collection in general for the social data school and civil society in general. So, what we would like to do for uh, the data school um, for this occasion, in this instance, for the one in January, is um, you know an, an online um, data school is uh, an application only data school, uh, a teaching program that is structured around. The life, cycle, the life cycle of a digital research project. So you'll be applying with your projects. And we're gonna cover the following. Principles of research design, data collection, cleaning and preparation, methods of analysis and visualization, and data management and preservation practices uh, in some degree or another. So those are kind of the, the, the basic foundations for, for this instance of the data school, social data school. Here we are expecting to, to be applying, I was kind of hinting at it already. Uh, we, we are welcoming applications from all backgrounds, um, including journalists, NGOs, activists, trade unionists, and members of civil society organizations. We've had uh, journalists from the UK, from the Global South, uh, from Europe. Uh, we've had uh, other organizations joining us as well, NGOs, I meant. Um, and that's what we'd like to do uh, for this occasion as well. Your students, PhD students, master students, undergraduate students are also welcome to apply, but we will prioritize applications from those who show that they are actively engaged with the sector, you know, um, either journalism, media, or NGOs in, in, this, uh, in this case. So we are very keen on, on, on seeing applications from all around the world. Um, you know, with the facility that we have of having online teaching, uh, we are happy to see applications from all over the place, not just the UK. Uh, you need to be able to participate in the live sessions, of course, which are going to be taking place between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, GMT in this case. Um, so, yeah, that, that's going to be like uh, kind of the precondition uh, if you are joining from a different part of the world. We 
are also encouraging applications from the global south from individuals and organizations representing historic, historically mar marginalized and oppressed social groups as well so we we we, we have a special commitment to there so we encourage applications from those places too and those backgrounds now about the cost um we have a standard rate of 245 pounds uh that's that's the the standard rate and then we have a concessionary rate of 45 pounds that includes or might include the students the unemployed uh community projects unfunded projects um those are the, the the two main rates and we also have a very small number of boards but there is available um in total we have 30 places for for this data school for the social data school uh we have 15 places for a concessionary rate um sorry for a standard rate 15 places for the a standard rate and we're going to have a, a, a similar number for concessionary rate although with two or three um, bursary places. Um, now to apply for the concessionary rates, um, well, there are those are limited places, uh, but you have to, you know, make the case as to why uh, you, 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 you kind of qualify for a concessionary rate place. Uh, we can go through it later uh, if you have any questions about this as well. Now, some important dates for for, for, for this data school. The deadline, of course, is the 11th of December, 2022. Um, that's going to be our deadline for application. And the data school itself is going to take place from the 9th to the 13th of January, 2023. There is a QR code in case you, you want to go directly to, to the uh, CTH uh, page, web page. I think it's going to be important uh, also to say or to kind of um insist a little bit on the on the project based approach so you'll be you'll be applying um to, to the data school but you have to present a, a project you'll be working on either an investigation as an investigative journalist or it could be a research report as a part of us uh, of um, uh, an ngo um or same uh, a report uh, for a trade union etc yes I, I wanted just to kind of underscore that and I would like to go now, now to, to, to the curriculum, an overview of what we are going to be teaching. It's probably uh, an important part of, uh, uh, of today's session uh, so that you know what you're applying for. So we're going to have all those 13 sessions um, spread across over a, a week. And we're going to have uh, uh, that module called Method Methodology for Digital Investigations. That's by myself. We're going to have uh, video data analysis with uh, Tim Kisok, who, sorry, Tom Kisok, who um, is, is going to um, teach us how to collect uh, and analyze data from social media, particularly uh, live video. It's going to be a very interesting session. Um, we have this two sessions of incubators, which is kind of an editorial as well as some sort of you know, um, academic, if you like, if you like, so as well, um, uh, advice about your, your your projects, about your stories. Uh, so we have two of those incubators. So either me or someone else from the teaching team will be there. We also have another module called social network analysis with digital data. Uh, that's Hugo Liao uh, working with Gaffi. Um, we also have this this module called geolocation and open source investigations by uh, our friends from uh, uh, digital verification corps um, uh, from the university of cambridge um, and um, that's uh, going to be a, a module that we are going to repeat from the previous instance of the data school which was very successful and we thought it was uh, uh, going to be worth it to to, to have it again uh, as well as an introduction to critical ai that's another module by uh, my colleague Anne alexander and uh, we're going to have a public event because you know all these sessions are going to be for the group for the, the 30 people that are going to be part of the of the group uh, the closed group but then we're going to have that public event we are going to open it up to 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 anyone who will sign up for it and that's going to be a session on automations for investigations 
uh, we are working on on, on uh, the guests for, for that uh, for that session still, but we're thinking they're going to be either journalists or NGOs working around around those lines. And the last session, because those are kind of the second part of the sessions that the sessions that I've already mentioned. The last session that is there that you need to know about is uh, data specialization using Python and Blender. That's going to be a session by Nick Masterton from Forensic Architecture. That's also uh, another module that uh, we, we we had uh, in, in a previous social data school. Uh, he, as it states there, is using Blender, more Blender than Python, to specialize data. Um, is uh, also uh, 3D um, uh, modeling of uh, uh, space and uh, and data. So I, I hope that you find it useful and interesting too. So that's kind of the overview of the curriculum of the content that we're going to have for 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 January. In terms of the time commitment that are that expected from from students, so we have um, 13 hours of live teaching sessions spread over one week, as I just said, with those 13 modules. Some of them are one hour, some of them are two hours. Uh, so that's why uh, in all in all, uh, 13 hours. Um, in terms of the course materials, we're going to share these course materials before we start with the data school. So students are going to have time to, to go through them if they want before we start. Actually, you will have to because there, there's going to be some material to read, some videos to watch as well. And you're, 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 you'll be encouraged to, to, to look through, through it or to look at it uh, before as well as after. For a certain amount of time, we kind of, uh, we, we'll let you, you know for how long, maybe, maybe not more than a month or two months, but uh, you, you, you'll have time to, to look at it um, uh, slightly uh, after, after we finish with the data school. There are some technical requirements, of course, for, for an online data school. And uh, the most important are those two, internet connection for video calls, a laptop or desktop on which you can install software. Um, and this is going to be important because we're going to ask you to, to install um, some software over there. Um, you, you might need permission from your organization well in advance. So it might be worth uh, kind of preparing that. Um, which is actually the second point. Some of the software you'll, you'll need, I mean, Zoom, you're connected to Zoom already, so that won't be a problem, but we have uh, other software um, that we, we think is going to be important. Um, Gaffy, that's for social network analysis, and Blender for the session with, with Nick. We're thinking that probably uh, more, more uh, software packages are going to be required. We'll let you know uh, in advance, but those are the ones that we can mention right now. And almost as a conclusion, um, this is the, the teaching team. So I've mentioned Alex and Alexander, and uh, she's here with us. Uh, she's going to be part of the teaching team. Hugo Leal as well, or one of the founders of the data schools. As I've mentioned before, also Tom Kiso has got a background um, in mid organizations and now doing a PhD in Cambridge University, Nick Masterton from Forensic Architecture as well. And as I mentioned before, members of Amnesty International's Digital Verification Corps. They're going to be giving this session on, on, on geolocation and myself uh, teaching methodology. And I think that's the overview. Now I'm going to hand over to, to Anne in case she wants to say anything else about that overview as well, I missed something, and also about the, the module that she's going to be teaching. Um, so thanks, Irving. And um, yeah, I'm happy to give a, a short introduction to some of the content that I'm going to be covering in my module. Um, so in, in some ways, there's a, there's a theme around images in relation to the Social Data School um, this year. Uh, this this iteration of the social data school, the online social data school, um, where we're thinking about how to investigate with images and how to investigate the production of images. Um, and the area that I'm going to be covering is an overview and an introduction to critical methods for engaging with uh, machine learning driven systems, machine learning versions of artificial intelligence. 
systems. Um, and as people will probably be very well aware, um, images are kind of the bread and bread and butter in many ways of applications or for machine learning systems in many areas of life. So you could think about facial recognition that might be used in uh, law enforcement or in border security, um, image classification, object detection that's you has many applications in commercial in commercial um, settings. You know whether it's like uh, websites um, where you're you know searching through large numbers of images, um, or whether it's in terms of um, uh, you know a data analysis in the media. Uh, and so on and so forth. And there's also increasingly uh, a, trend, a, a trend towards working with um, artificially generated images. Uh, we've seen recent controversies around AI art um, and uh, using, using AI systems to generate, for example, stock photography, um, realistic, photorealistic images that are then used in advertising or maybe used for illustrate, il illustrative purposes. Um, so working with images is something that uh, that have uh, are, are uh, either produced through or are uh, analysed with um, machine learning systems is is part of everyday life. Uh, but it also is what it, it's a set of practices that has enormous societal implications. And so, what I'll be doing in the module will be introducing you to some of the architecture of uh, machine learning systems that work with vision. Um, and also showing you some simple experiments that we can do, and um, these will be running in a web browser um, to explore how machine vision systems work, and in particular to think about the implications of those systems from a point of view of the impacts, um, the disparate impacts and, di and differential impacts on people for, from a point of view of, uh, of equality and diversity and inclusion. Um, and to think about some of the, you know, uh, very significant um, problems that have emerged through, uh, for example, bias in uh, facial recognition al algorithms, um, uh, as one recent, you know, very often very high high profile example. Um, so in terms of the um, in terms of the practicalities of what you what you need, there isn't any special software. Um, because the what we'll be doing uh, if we will run we'll, we'll run a few experiments that you can try out for yourself, um, and those will be simply require access to a web to a web a web browser. Um, so yes, basically that's the overview of my content the content of my module. I'm very happy to answer specific questions on uh, on that. Thank you, Anne. And then I'm going to talk about my module, which is methodology for, for investigations, which is making the case for coming up with, with a real plan for your project, for, for your investigation from the very early stages of it up to further investigation, information gathering, the preservation of, of, of information, uh, the verification of it, analysis and, and publication. With a with a strong uh, emphasis on, on, on hypothesis, the, the formulation of hypothesis, and how this might work beyond academia, uh, and you know, in, in in the public sphere, right? Once it's it's published, and how it be beneficial for for projects like investigative journalism, for NGO reports, and train, trade union reports as well. So. I'll be going through some very basic steps uh, to come up with, you know, a logic behind how we construct the methods that we use for all these steps of uh, of research, of an investigation, right? So these these kind of kind of basic points, basic foundations for for methodology in the public interest in the digital age is. Uh, it can be applied in, in, in all these instances. And this is precisely that. It's, it's, it's a foundation that is kind of malleable depending on, on, on the work or the, the stories that you have can be well applied and have, has been applied already actually in the past uh, by some of our students on cases of human rights violations or cases of corruption or um, cases of uh, uh, astroturfing, um, et cetera. So it's, it's kind of the foundation so that then later on with some of the, uh, the software, the techniques, 
the methods that you you'll be acquiring uh, as part of the data school, you can kind of make sense of it and plan better uh, for for that investigation, and then you can maximize resources, time, and well, just a, a, a more impactful story, a more impactful report, etc. And the dissemination is also kind of more successful. And in kind of very broad terms, that's what my my module is about. And I think now, and um, if you don't mind talking about the application, the, the, the perfect application uh, for, for the social data school, I think that'll be, that'd be great. Because that, that usually gives kind of a, uh, a really good insight to what we're looking for as part of, uh, you know, the application. Um, yes, thanks. I'm happy to give some some points about that. And um, also thanks to everyone who's been sending questions in the chat. I've been trying to answer those as we as we go. Um, and we'll come back to some of those in a minute. Um, so in terms of uh, in terms of what the perfect application looks like. So firstly, one of the reasons we often turn down applications is actually because they're not detailed enough. They don't give us a good sense of who you are. Um, how you will benefit from the school, um, what your prior experience is, and you know that we give us enough information to judge that you have understood what it is that we're offering. So a, a good application, for example, would include information about why you want to do the why you want to do the course, what specifically it will benefit you, um, and talk about perhaps applications you might make with the skills that you that you that you learn or that you're already using something that is comparable to these um, to these methods and you want to improve them or that you're looking for put you're looking to put together some existing knowledge into a more coherent form so for example uh, you might have learned about some of the techniques that we're going to teach but you're interested in how they fit together in a, a research project a digitally driven research project um, or an investigation and you also want to get the benefit of networking with other people who are doing similar projects and that would all those would all be very good reasons for wanting to come to the to the data school um, we don't we don't expect people to have um, you know or document kind of uh, um, prior experience in using any particular technique um, beyond the fact that we would like to see evidence that you're at least reasonably comfortable with working uh, working with digital tools in a, in a simple you know in a simple sense, we're not expecting you to have already worked with, for example, Blender for the course that Nick is teaching, or um, that you've had any prior experience of social network analysis. Um, it, all of the courses, the, all the modules that we run are, are aimed at, 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 at beginners in that, in that sense. Um, but we would like to see, we think that the school, the school content will be most beneficial where people are already starting to work with, their work, you're working with data in some way in your existing, uh, in your existing role, whether that's as a, as a volunteer, as an activist in a professional capacity. Um, so that's another thing to tell us about in the form. Um, finally, uh, and there was a question about this um, that somebody uh, asked in the chat, um, you know, what if you're a student, what if you have, you want to, you're learning these methods or you want to learn these methods in an academic context? Um, here, it's important to say that the data schools is not primarily um, an academic, uh, um, initiative. It's not about teaching people, for example, social network analysis um, as a kind of academic summer school or winter school. It's actually about, for example, setting up a situation where people who use social network analysis as a set of tools in academia and also in the media, say in the third sector, uh, in context beyond academia, can learn together and learn from each other. So if you're a student and you apply and you say, I want to go to the data school because it will help me write my dissertation, that will not, that, that's the kind of framing that will make us feel that we want to prioritize people who are actually more outward looking uh, in terms of their students. So for example, there might be a student who's working with an NGO or a student who is you know, currently on a, a course where they're learning data, uh, data intensive methodologies, but they want to work in the NGO sector at a later stage. Um, and they've got a clear, you know, a clear trajectory where they're, they're, they're not thinking about it solely within uh, academia. And the reason for that is, is because of the democratization 
aspect of what we're doing. We are trying to open up and make accessible these methods to people who would otherwise not have access to them. And although there is a sometimes a shortage of access to this kind of training, even for students, um, there are more opportunities often than, say, for journalists, uh, particularly if they're freelancers or if they're working for small, um, you know, or community organisations uh, or unfunded projects and so on and so forth. So that's that's another area where it's important um, if you're thinking, if you are uh, applying and you already have an affiliation with an academic institution um, that I would say, please tell us about how that is part of how that sort of fits with the mission of the data schools, which is, as I said, to foster this dialogue and exchange of good practice and learning between people who are using similar methods, but in different contexts, if that makes sense. Thank you, Anne. Um, I think the last thing that probably we need to, to share with you is um, contact details. So feel free to, to contact us at, at any point, just send us an email, either to Heather Stellard, who is in charge of our communications, or to me, and I'll be very happy, we'll be very happy to, to respond to any questions and queries. Um, some people have applied uh, already, uh, but if you want to, uh, to apply again and you would like to maybe later on ask questions and re, you know, I mean, I mean, I reapply, you're very welcome to, to do that too. Or if later on you, you, you have another question, and that it occurs to you later, just send us an email and we'll be happy to, to respond. I'll be happy to respond. Um, and yeah, just kind of um, raise rates. Thank you for your interest in, in, in the data schools. Um, the, the, the one that is upcoming is the one of, uh, taking place on the night from the night of the 13th. And we're very looking forward to receive your applications by the 11th of December.